Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Uwem. In today's video, I want to speak about how to overcome the cycle of condemnation. The reality is that many Christians have struggled or are still struggling with condemnation even after they have repented and given their life to Christ and are walking with Christ. Condemnation is a feeling of guilt and sentencing someone to deserve punishment. The word that is used in today's culture is to counsel someone or to censor someone, which means you've been judged guilty and then to be punished. So sometimes because of our sin or because of our past or because of accusation, we feel condemned. And these are the three places that condemnation could come from. Whether it's from accusation by people or just your sin, your failures, your frailty as a human, or the aspect of saying, I have negative past. I have experiences that are not good. So because of this, you could feel condemned. And the first thing I want you to know is that God does not condemn you. John 3 verse 17 says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. God did not send Christ Jesus to come and condemn us. And God himself does not condemn his children. Why? Because condemnation is destructive. Condemnation kills. Paul states it in Corinthians that the letter of condemnation kills. That is why whenever there is a law, there is always an opportunity for sin to be manifested. And when an opportunity for sin is manifested, then condemnation will come in. And because of the law, we being born as humans, the law of God is good and perfect, like Paul elaborated in Romans chapter 7, but we are carnal and we have a sinful nature. We cannot meet up with the standard of the law. And when we try to justify ourselves by the law, we always fall short. What is next? Condemnation. You feel condemned. You are judged to be sentenced for punishment. The reality is that now the devil armed himself through the law to try to bring us back into sin, back into the world. And then when we are in the cycle of guilt and condemnation, the devil finds a way to make us repeat that cycle and struggle in the same place without having victory. God does not condemn you. That is the thought that you have to owe to your heart, that God did not send Christ Jesus to condemn the world, which is the world, sinners, all of us were part of that until we came to Christ. And even now that we are in Christ, we have to set our focus on Christ and know that sometimes, because we are humans, we could feel condemnation, but we should not be condemned. You should hold that to heart. God convicts us. He does not condemn. Conviction is the work of the Holy Spirit guiding a person to recognize their sin and turn to God for forgiveness. It is constructive and leads to repentance and growth. But the reverse of it is condemnation. Condemnation is a place that is destructive and makes a person feel hopeless. Condemnation literally leads people to despair, whereby you feel like, I can never do anything good. So it's better off, I just continue living in this old way of sin. I just continue in this way that I feel like I cannot set myself free. Paul said, when I want to do right, I cannot. But when I want to do wrong, I just find myself doing it. Like the wrong thing that I don't want to do, I find myself doing. But the right that I want to do, I desire to do, I don't have the, cap the capacity to do it. The reality is that once there is condemnation in the way, there is no way that you can move forward. In John 16 from verse 7 to 8, it says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away for. If I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. What is the Holy Spirit doing to convict, not to condemn the world of sin? The world are already sinning. But the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. He doesn't come to come and say, I am here to condemn all of you. But he comes to say, I am here to convict you, to show you how much God loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, to show you that I still care for you. And you have to know that God has not condemned you and God does not condemn and he will not condemn you. Instead, God brings a loving conviction. And I will pause here to say, any teaching that you hear, that condemns you is not of God in the new covenant. Any teaching that condemns you and judges you for punishment 
places you for hell, your sin will find you out. That is not the message of the gospel of Christ. And I'll be so bold to say that I fell a victim to that growing up, that I hit messages like that, that tore me apart, that made me lose the capacity to even try and do good because it feels like it is fruitless. There's no need trying this thing. You're already condemned, so why not just go ahead and continue sinning? When the Holy Spirit comes to convict the world of sin, it is because they have not believed in the Son of God, in Jesus. And in convicting us, now that talks to believers, it convicts you of righteousness. Why does it convict you of righteousness? Because your righteousness is not of yourself. Christ has given you his righteousness that you would come to receive his righteousness. And it will convict the world of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged already because of Christ's finished work at the cross. So this means because Christ came, he died, and he paid the penalty for all our sins, he has finished the work. This is another thing that makes people fall into condemnation, self-consciousness. The answer I would give you here is that leave a place of being self-conscious to becoming Christ conscious. Because when you are self-conscious, you'll be in a place of trying to obey God and serve God by your effort and your abilities, which is a place of self-righteousness. And you're always saying, oh, I did not pray enough. I did not read the Bible enough. Or maybe this bad thing is happening to me because I did not go to God in prayer. This bad thing is happening to me because I did not work on my relationship with God. God doesn't treat you because of how you behave with him. The psalmist says that God does not treat us according to our sins. If God does that, none of us would stand. So it's not about how much you prayed, how many hours you prayed, how many times you read the Bible, because God has saved you, kept you, even when you were in sin. So now that you are saved and you have come to him, why would he punish you for not reading your Bible? Why would he punish you for not praying for 10 hours? Why would he punish you for not doing this or that enough or not going to church enough? No, God doesn't operate that way. His love for you is unconditional. Now, anything you get to do in regard to serving him is out of love, not out of obligation of you saying, I need to do this because if I don't do it, God is going to punish me. I need to do this because if I don't do it, God is not going to be happy with me. God does not treat you according to your sin. Let go your self-righteousness and accept the grace of God. Because the more you hold on to your self-righteousness, you are closing up the door of your heart for God's grace to enter, for you to know that it's not about your works. It's not about your actions. You cannot just come and say, oh, I didn't sin that much. Just let that go. The next thing you need to do is forgive yourself for your past. Now, this is personal for me because when I was struggling with the thought of, you know, being molested, I blamed myself. I regretted what happened. I put the blame on me and I felt condemned. I felt that God has forsaken me because I had failed him. That was a difficult place to be. I was a victim in a place. But then I am the one taking on the blame. I am the one taking on the kind of like this punishment that looks like, looked like a punishment to me. Because I did not even do this thing. So it was a thing that could have led me to leave God and just continue in sin. But thank God for his loving Holy Spirit and his fear that kept me. Because I was like, I've tried, I'm trying my best and I did not pray for this to happen. Why did it happen to me? I came to a place that I didn't, I didn't feel forgiven. And I know there are some believers today who because of their sins or what happened to them, they don't feel forgiven because they've not forgiven themselves. And this is a cycle of condemnation. And one thing I realized is that when I stopped blaming myself for what happened to me, it opened the door for me to receive the grace of God and know that I did not cause this and I can't even blame God for this. It happened because I'm in a broken world. So now I can't take in the blame. I know I wanted the narrative of my story to be changed, but then that was why I blamed myself because I wanted the story to be like, I fought, I did this, I did that. I blamed myself because I was like, you could have done this, you should have done this, you would have done this, could have, would have, should have. But I did not do any of those things that I thought I would have done because in that situation, I did not have any thought. I didn't know what was going to happen. So then I have gone ahead living my life over years with this blame without knowing that this is also part of what is holding me captive. Until I come to a place that I received the forgiveness of God and then I forgave myself. You need to forgive yourself of your past. 
You need to forgive yourself of the things that you've been holding so dear as if it's a good thing. Like the things that happened to you or the things you did that you cannot forgive yourself or you told yourself, I can't forgive myself because of this that happened through me. You have to come to a place of receiving God's forgiveness for you. If he has forgiven you, then you are forgiven. He has made you clean through his blood, through the blood of Christ. The story in John chapter 8 talks about a woman who was caught in the act of adultery. And if you read John chapter 8 from verse 3 to 11, I think you're going to enjoy the story. Now, these people, the scribes, brought this woman to Jesus and then told him, we caught her in the act of adultery. And according to the law of Moses, she is supposed to be stoned. Now, they did this to accuse Jesus. And Jesus, being the wise one, he did not reply to them according to how I would love to reply to them. Because I would tell them, where is the man? You brought this woman, so where did you keep the man? Right? But then, he replied to them in wisdom. He stooped down, not even answering them. And they were still blabbing. And he rose up and said, any of you that is, has never sinned, that is pure, that is perfect, cast the first stone. That is so wonderful because he did not even condemn them even when they brought a woman to be condemned. He did not condemn them. Instead, he convicted them. And scripture says that they were all convicted and they left from the oldest to the youngest. When they left, Jesus rose up and I'll read verse 10. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, we are those accusers of yours. Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. I see something beautiful here. Jesus gave her a voice to proclaim that she is not condemned. And I want you, wherever you are watching this video from, to tell yourself, I am not condemned. I am not condemned. If you've been accused of something, or if you have accused yourself, if you have blamed yourself, come to a place of saying, I am not condemned. Why? Because Jesus has not condemned you. He had the power to condemn her because he had no sin, but he chose to give her grace because he was already on his way to die to forgive all the sins, all the sin dates that we as humans have committed. So you have to come to a place of accepting this love and this grace that Jesus poured out for you and I. And do not forget this important fact that condemnation will come through accusation even from people, whether in your office or any place. It's kind of like, somebody throwing something at you you're not supposed to behave like that accusing you and then you feel condemned you feel bad you don't have to be condemned because christ has not condemned you does this mean i am giving you a go ahead to live life anyhow no jesus clearly told the lady and said go and sin no more because the power of no condemnation will empower her to go and not want to sin again romans chapter 8 clearly says there is now therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And that is what empowers us as believers to say no to sin, to say no to the things that are holding us in bondage. And you need to come to a place that you allow the love of God to flow in your heart. Embrace the love of God. Embrace the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that has been poured out. And embrace the fact that you are not saved by your efforts. God does not deal with you based on your works, based on what you can present, what you can bring to the table. He deals with you based on the finished work of his son, Jesus Christ, at the cross of Calvary. Thank you so much for watching today's video. And I hope that this video is a blessing to you. Let me know in the comment section, what are those things that you've picked from this video? And what are those things that you felt condemned by? Or you felt like you could not but feel condemned? What are the accusations that the devil has been throwing at you? Discuss in the comment section and maybe it's going to encourage one or two people. And I pray that God will save you from the cycle of condemnation for you to know that God himself has not condemned you. And because God has justified you, you don't have to remain in a place of condemnation. Paul said, the life that I live in the flesh, I live by faith in the son of God who died for me and gave himself for me. He says, it's not I that live, it is Christ that lives in me. So you have to come to a place of finding your identity in Christ and in the finished work of Jesus at the cross. Hit the subscribe button and hit the like button if this video is helpful. Share this video to your friends and families. And I would love to see you in this next video. Thank you and God bless. Bye-bye.